Welcome, everyone. We have two leaders from Thornton Tomasetti on the weekly today. Uh, first off is Badre Hurrier. He's director of AI within the core studio at Thornton Tomasetti. And Grant McCullough is director and, uh, director and a managing director, um, especially within the technology, technology accelerators, Twin One and Twin Two at Thornton Tomasetti. Badre and Grant, thanks for joining us. Our Thank you, David. For having us. So, Badre, you are the founder and CEO of Thornton Tomasetti's latest technology. Um, it's a piece of software that uses AI, uh, and it's called T2D2. It's designed to sort of shake up the traditional building exterior forensics industry, which sounds very interesting. Badre, can you talk about T2D2? What is it? What does it do? Yeah, certainly. Uh, so you may be familiar with uh, computer vision, which is a narrow form of artificial intelligence. Uh, it's been around for uh, many years now, but especially in the last few years, there's been like a, an explosion of uh, um, capabilities that you know, you've achieved better than human performance in computer vision. Uh, so we have brought that technology into the AEC space. Of course, you've seen that in consumer electronics, security, medical diagnosis, and so on. We bring that to the AEC space. So uh, it's computer vision trained to detect, monitor, and classify damage in building structures. And you know, we've trained our algorithms to work on um, different types of materials. We at Thornton Tomasetti, we've collected you know hundreds of thousands of images over decades of experience uh, in forensics and renewal practices, inspecting buildings. So we have a catalog of various images showing different types of damage conditions in various structures. We've used that to train algorithms, the state of the vision, computer, state of the art computer vision models, uh, and, and deployed them to detect and classify damage conditions in buildings. And it's not just buildings, it can be extended to bridges and so on. So, so Badr, I guess at the highest level, you know, you and I, we all think about this really as a data analytics firm. Uh, not as data collection. We're somewhat agnostic to, to data collection. Uh, images can be collected by uh, iPhones, by cameras, by drones. Uh, but the uh, beauty of, the, of T2D2 is the smart algorithms are able to look at the images and detect damages in all kinds of facade, uh, originally, uh, initially uh, facade uh, uh, types. Uh, as Badri said, uh, what differentiates T2D2 from other products in the market is that our, our sister company, uh, Thornton Tomasetti, has, uh, as Badri said, hundreds of thousands of images mm -hmm. across many different facade types, uh, both in terms of, uh, of buildings, uh, transportation uh, structures like uh, bridges, and so as we speak, uh, those algorithms are getting smarter and smarter because we have this historical uh, database of, of uh, hundreds of thousands of images that are making an impact on the, uh, the, a the algorithm's ability to do, its, do their job effectively and quickly. Yeah, and that's, thanks Grant, that's a, a great point. And yeah, without that collection, that mass collection of images, um, this wouldn't work, right? That's what you need. You need to feed those into this right. machine <laughs> and, it, and it starts to learn that if you see these certain issues, you probably have that problem or these sort of problems. That's and it's down to the hairline fracture, right? I mean, stuff that you probably maybe couldn't even see visually. Um, this, this system is able to detect potential uh, uh, damage on uh, building exterior, correct? That's correct. It, you know, the, that's the beauty of this. I mean, these algorithms are they're not like humans. I mean, they are trained by humans. They, you know, humans have annotated these images and it works through supervised learning. You're, you retrain it to detect uh, what you want it to detect. But once you've trained it, it doesn't get uh, tired or it doesn't get, you know, um, bored. I mean, it, it, it shows the same efficacy on all types of images as the first image as the, you know, 100,000th image. Um, and, and so that's the beauty of I mean, so uh, we've, we've trained it on different types of materials, starting, ranging from brick masonry, stucco, concrete, uh, and so on. So it can detect hairline cracks, uh, depending on the resolution of the images, as well as, you know, large spalling, exposed rebar, um, efflorescence, and various other damage conditions. 
So how will this technology change the way major firms like yours, engineering firms, forensics firms, do their job? It is going to be as simple as hiring a drone firm and flying around and taking a bunch of photos and, you're, and video and you're done? Or so, I don't know, I just well, want to yeah, how things will change. Yeah, exactly. So where we add to that process is, to, you know, we, we, these days, as you mentioned, you know, f photo collection or documentation, uh, data collection is is uh, very easy, very simple. So you can end up with lots and lots of data. But how do you make sense of that data? Uh, how do you convert that data into you know actionable information and that actionable information into insight? And we're not saying that we you know solve the problem. The machines are going to turn data into insight. We're going to make the process of getting from data to insights much easier. So we're going to make it so much simpler uh, for the engineers to review the actual damage conditions instead of having to pour over hundreds of thousands of images. So mm -hmm. that's where our image analytics uh, comes into picture. I mean, we talked quite a bit about the AI deep learning, but how does it actually work? Can you kind of give us an inside look at the black box, if you will? Uh, sure. I mean, computer vision, as you know, has been around for um, many years, even many decades. Uh, but it's only in the past uh, eight to ten years that you've seen sort of a revolution where uh, uh, new technology, uh, new algorithms, as well as uh, lots of data uh, together have, you know, converged to an extent where computer vision has uh, performed at uh, better than human uh, levels at several benchmark tests. So. Uh, if you know, if, if you look at just images, they're just a bunch of random numbers. You know, previously you had um, uh, so sort of algorithms that were more prescriptive about you. If you see these features, you know, that relates to a, a particular condition. But right now, deep learning has transformed it in a way that you know you can use supervised learning, you can use lots of um, annotated image data sets, and uh, come up uh, come up with a way of mapping the image data to the um, to the actual information co content within that image um, in, a, in a much more uh, simple or a transparent way without you know, having to write down prescriptive rules for that. So that's, that's the difference between deep learning and uh, how that has affected computer vision compared to traditional uh, functional approach. I, I think in terms, uh, maybe to, to follow up with that, in terms of this as a business, uh, you know, we have uh, multiple uh, client groups uh, that, that T2D2 uh, applies to. Uh, one, of course, are AEC firms uh, system-wide that may be uh, engaged in a, in a retrofit or a renovation project. So they want to get a quick uh, and detailed assessment of of the condition of the of the uh, the building the facade, uh, another uh, client base are those same AEC firms who have uh, contracts with uh, with users or property owners uh, where they're providing uh, uh, data collection uh, and preventative maintenance uh, services, uh, and another another group of clients. Are our direct users, property owners, REITs, building management companies who have multiple properties, uh, who find the uh, the product uh, very attractive, on the basis that uh, it's typically uh, less uh, less cost, it's faster. Uh, you're using machine learning to to do the uh, more of the uh, the automated part of the process. Uh, and you're using uh, downstream, still using downstream uh, sophisticated engineering talent uh, after uh, an image has been analyzed where there's uh, recommendations that need to be made uh, on, on uh, uh, damage fixes uh, downstream. Um, the, uh, the, the real uh, business uh, uh, foundation here is that uh, we develop a portal for our clients to use on each of their projects. And the portal includes these AI analyzed images. Uh, and depending on the client's need, uh, we're then able to return every quarter, every six months, might be annually, uh, depending on the client's uh, needs. 
uh, and we're able to quickly assess changes in those AI analyzed images so that uh, an owner can see where there's unexpected accelerated change in a damaged area and get ahead of the curve, both in terms of downstream safety issues and ahead of the curve in terms of lower uh, cost to repair when the problem is a smaller problem than when it becomes a larger problem. So that's the real kind of business thesis uh, for all kinds of, you know, three major groups of, of clients that we're focused on. And granted, it's, it's a software as a service, right? So there, it's a subscription for these users? It, it's, it's cloud-based SaaS business. Yep. Got it. Got it. Okay, quite interesting. Um, use cases, um, you've talked about you know, bridges, you know, more of the infrastructure type stuff. Obviously, uh, building design and construction focuses more on the buildings. Um, what, what are we talking about here? It's, you know, you got the retrofit project, you got the preventative maintenance type applications, um, any other specific applications or stuff that, you know, you internally, Thornton Tomasetti has sort of piloted uh, the technology on. What, do, what are we talking about here as far as projects go? I mean, in terms of projects, you know, if you talk about let's say new york city or any of these big urban markets there are uh you know facade uh ordinances that say you, mean, you can you're probably familiar with the incident that happened the last year where there was an architect who got killed by a piece of falling facade so you have these facade ordinances that uh dictate that you have to inspect the facade every five years uh to make sure that it, it's in a safe condition uh so that in itself dictates that there are plenty of uh buildings out there that need you know periodic uh, or, you know, on schedule um, maintenance checks and in inspections that need to be performed. And right now, most of these are performed manually. You have people uh, on swing stages or boom lifts and other means, and you need to have scaffolding in place to do all of that. So that's a very uh, expensive uh, as well as a tedious and, uh, um, and also not a very efficient process. I think a lot of that process can be replaced by you know, using AI to analyze images that are collected by, you know, it could be drones or it could be from the ground up if they're, if they're short buildings or it could be by any other means, by robotic means and so on. Uh, so that in itself, I think for the built environment, there's, there's a huge market in New York City, Chicago, and, and down south in Florida and you know, various other places. So there's a huge market in the, in the building sector to identify, um, um, identify damage conditions and defects in existing structures. What are we looking at time savings here? Obviously, there's a variety of applications. So it's not always apples to apples comparison, but I don't know, can you give any kind of example? Tremendous time savings. I, I think, well, you can get a lot of time savings from the data collection process if you have you know, drones flying instead of having to scaffold up and uh, have swing stages and so on. So you can have tremendous time savings there. But even beyond that, uh, in the processing of those images, you know, we can generate a report in a matter of minutes where it would take probably a few hours or maybe a few days to look at all of the images and review the conditions and come up with those insights. Uh, so overall, I, I you know, we, we, we like you know, in many cases, uh, a fifth or less, maybe a tenth of the time taken for you know going from a collection all the way to analysis, and significantly less cost. Exactly. And yeah, we've been tracking what Thornton Thomas said he's been doing uh, through Twin and Core Studio. And it's just exciting to see AEC firms uh, creating these innovations versus some, you know, Silicon Valley startup that has no experience in construction <laughs> or engineering. Um, so I am so happy you joined us today, Badre and Grant, and to explain T2D2. Um, people could check out BDC Network for more information on this technology and, of course, your website, t2d2.ai. So, Badra and Grant, thanks so much for your time. Thanks, Dave. Appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate it.